Hello and welcome to the Bot Nirvana podcast where we dive into all things software automation. I am your host Nandan Mullakra. While I'm not podcasting, I write articles on nandan.info. I hope you enjoy the show. Let's get right into it. We have Tom Tally with us today. He is the author of two books on RPA and AI, the Robotic Process Automation Handbook and Artificial Intelligence Basics. He is also a contributor on Bloomberg, Forbes and Business Week. He has been in technology for long and is also an investor in the space. His books and articles are easy to understand as he writes for a wider non-technical audience. So in this chat we explore the history and nuances of AI, RPA and what the future holds from an automation and technology perspective. Hope you enjoy the show. Hello Tom, thanks and welcome to the Bot Nirvana podcast. Tom, you've you wear multiple hats, and I see you have an interesting background in technology. Uh, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. And and thanks for having me on, and thanks for everyone who's uh, listening today. Um, but yeah, so my my journey in technology uh, started a long time ago in the early '80s when I was in high school. My dad bought my first computer, so I'm a tel- self-taught. A uh, computer programmer started in BASIC, went to C, Pascal, learned you know whatever I could learn, and developed programs when I was in, in high school, and, and actually sold some of them as well. Uh, but it wasn't until college that I started my own business, which was in the e-learning area, and developed uh, software for test preparation, and then uh, raised raised capital for that, and uh, then I went on to another business. My partner took over the the e-learning business and uh, went into, uh, started another company. It was kind of like a Shopify for 1998. And you could go and create your own little website. It, it wasn't too sophisticated, but uh, it was very popular. And uh, it grew a lot and we sold that to a company called Infospace. Um, along the way, I've done a lot of writing, uh, as you know. Uh, so I started writing for Forbes.com I think when it started, 1996, and I've been writing for them since then. And then I've also been, uh, I've written a variety of books, uh, like yourself, uh, one on robotic process automation, and then a a book on artificial intelligence, uh, primarily for those who are non-technical people, which is most most people. Um, And um, and yeah, so a little bit of my background. And uh, like I said, it's, it's great to be here. Thank you, Tom. Uh, that's an interesting background. And um, so I think you have transitioned over to AI and RPA gradually, right? And I think you got interested in it. So can you tell us how you got about writing these books on RPA and AI? Yeah, so I've always been interested in AI since I was a kid. You know, I, I watched the movies like everyone else uh, and thought about, well, that'd be really cool technology and then realize Technology was nowhere near doing any of that stuff. Um, so, you know, I had to make money, uh, you know, so uh, so early in my career, I didn't really do anything with AI. It was just more of a curiosity. Um, but in the last four or five years, uh, with the developments that we've seen in terms of open source, uh, GPUs, the availability of data, uh, you know, revolutionary concepts in data science, such as uh, deep learning, you know, all came together at the same time. And I thought, you know, oh, I, this now it, it seems like it's it's ready for prime time. Uh, and, and I mean, you could just, you know, just pull your phone out and you, you got Siri, you got Alexa, you know, so it's here. Uh, and so that's, that's, you know, I thought, you know, I want to do something with this AI stuff. Um, and I thought a book, you know, there are a lot of books on the topic, uh, but they usually are two buckets. There's very technical books. Uh, you know, if, if you want to program in Python and, you know, get into the equations, that's great. But most people, that's that's too much. And then the other books about AI are more about societal issues about, you know, the computers are going to take us over and make us slaves. And, you know, that's interesting. <laughs> but if I'm a business person... Uh, and the fact is, you know, there are a lot of business people who are in charge of AI projects who are not data scientists. And mm-hmm. I thought, where, can I write a book for that person? And that that's that was the thinking for that. And it's actually done done pretty well. 
Um, and then for RPA, um, I stumbled into RPA mostly. I, I read a Wall Street Journal article. Uh, it's my favorite publication, by the way. I shouldn't say that to Forbes, but um, <laughs> I, love the, I love the Wall Street Journal. I, a few years ago, I read an article in the Wall Street Journal about these companies like UiPath and Blue Prism, and I thought, wow, this is an interesting category. Uh, and then I, I wrote a, a chapter on that, on, about RPA, my AI book. And then my editor came to me and said, you know, I, I want to have a book on, on RPA. And I saw you wrote a book, uh, wrote a chapter on this. Would you be interested in writing that? And I said, yeah. So that's how that came about. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the, usually these things just kind of happen by osmosis and accident and running into things. Uh, and that, that's kind of been the case with, with both of them. Great. And uh, from an AI perspective uh, and, an, and an RPA perspective, <clears throat> right? Uh, you've, seen, you've seen the whole history of AI. I mean, you've been, as you said, been an enthusiast since long. So do you see RPA as an extension of AI, like some investors think, uh, or RPA is as like many technical people think it's dumb and then, you know, what's your take on AI versus RPA? Well, I think it, it goes to the question of like, what is our, what is AI? Right. Um, and um, it, there's, the, you know, AI was coined in 1956 at Dartmouth University by a group of academics. And, um, you know, computers obviously were a lot, you know, less sophisticated at the, you know, they, they took up, you know, rooms and rooms in a building and could only do of what a fraction of your iPhone can do today. Um, you know, you, you type something in the computer and a day later, it might give you an answer. And it's usually wrong anyway, or the computer would break down in the meantime, or your, your punch cards would fall all over the floor and you'd have to pick them up and stuff like that. It was a, it was a whole different era. Uh, the name artificial intelligence um, was coined by someone named John McCarthy who was, uh, you know, an absolute genius and, and one of the pioneers in data uh, in computer science. And uh, no one really liked the name artificial intelligence. Problem is no one can come up with a better name. So it's just stuck. <laughs> and, um, you know, so artificial intelligence is, you know, you know, the, the, the generic definition is, you know, replicating the human brain, you know, by using a computer to some, something to that extent, right? But, you know, it's, it's really not a great definition. So what's, what's happened is they're, they're, artificial intelligence is really just this huge category for different subsections. So we have machine learning, which right. has been around for a long time. And it's more like traditional statistics. And then we have deep learning, which is, you know, more of a modern phenomenon and is about huge, using huge amounts of data to find patterns. That's where we see the, you know, facial recognition, things like that. We have natural language processing, which is about understanding the voice. And, you know, we have OCR. So you have all these different parts of AI. So is RPA AI? Not really, in my opinion. Does it have elements of AI? Absolutely. You know, UiPath was using, you know, probably more crude computer vision about five or six years ago, but they were doing that. Then uh, you do need some computer vision to do this AI, but it's not like uh, the most sophisticated use of, of AI, I would say. Um, now, I think that's going to change in time as the technologies get better and stronger. Um, but I would say, to me, RPA looks more like a traditional enterprise software system mm -hmm. versus a, you know, a data-driven AI system. But again, you know, RPA works with a lot of data. So in theory, there should be a lot of opportunities for AI. But I think there's, there's a way to go for that. Right, right. And, you know, in, in my view, uh, RPA, like you said, has some way to go. RPA still is dumb, right? Yeah, it, I would agree. It, it does just repetitive work that is told to it, but it can turn intelligent once you have enough data, right? Right. Uh, then it may not be called RPA, and it's being 
you know, turning into newer names, right? right. And like our AI with RPA, many people call it as intelligent automation, just like right. anything with AI is being called intelligent something, right? right. So uh, intelligent automation, and then, then Gartner has come up with the term hyper automation. Right. Right. <laughs> and so many other terms floating around there. Yeah. And so, you know, the kind of AI uh, is, is seeping into RPA and whatever you mentioned earlier, right? Whether it is OCR, whether it's NLP, whether it is any of those AI techniques, computer vision, all are all getting started, getting uh, being used now in, uh, in RPA or in automation in general. Right. So with that as a next step with automation and AI, and so you have like two books for AI and RPA, mm -hmm. but seeing them together, you know, how, how do you see this evolving in terms of um, enterprise software? Yeah. Um, you know, the night the AI and, and RPA are, are really different stories right now. Mm -hmm. AI, the traditional AI project where a company will invest some money, put a team together, create an application with data, you know, and, and deploy it. That's a traditional AI project. Uh, AI project, those projects don't have a lot of success. I mean, okay. you look at any study, most of them don't go beyond the proof of concept stage. Right. It's very difficult, very difficult. And even, te even the most savvy technology companies have challenges with deploying AI. The nice thing about RPA is that, you know, while there are examples of deployments that are disastrous, which is the case with any enterprise software. Uh, for the most part, the there's there's usually a clear cut ROI. And that's what managers want. I mean, I mean, do they do they care that it's AI or some fancy hyper automation? You know, probably not. I think what they care about is do I save time? Do I, do I cut costs? You know, are my am I am I creating a better customer experience? Um, you know, those are the things, at least I hope those are the things that uh, are under consideration. Now, I know some some customers do get caught up in the hype and feel like they have to do AI or this or whatever is the hottest thing. But I think in general, a lot of companies are pretty grounded and they've had a lot of experience with technology that's not worked. So I think, you know, pe people nowadays are pretty good at evaluating what to do. Um, and, the, and the clear, the thing is that, you know, RPA is maybe not the, like you said, it might be dumb, but gets results. Yeah. And uh, well, I don't know, you know, so if you look at the UI path, which just recently went public, it's growing like a weed. Um, and um, it's hard to argue with growth and, you know, these huge customers that keep on buying more and more of the software. So clearly there, there is value here. Um, and, um, and so I think in a way, RPA is more of a bridge to AI as it is AI itself. Okay. Yeah. And, and bridge to AI more for the enterprises, maybe. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Though, yeah. Though, you know, there is a big debate about it. Even Gartner, you know, is questioning whether RPA is the bridge uh, for bringing That's true. AI. Yeah. Uh, so we don't know how, where it will go. But, right. uh, you know, as you said, it's difficult to argue against growth right and it's growing yeah. like a weed yeah uh, ui path uh, last five years have grown from a million to 600 million uh, yeah so th that, that's amazing growth right so yeah what do you think of that as an investor putting on your investor hat what do you think about ui path and the growth at ui path well um yeah and by the way the company's been around for 15 years yes uh, the first 10 years it went from zero to one million yeah and 10 customers, mm -hmm. to, 10 customers yeah. to 10 customers to the next next five years went from 1 million to over 600 million and i think close to 8,000 customers mm -hmm. and these are big customers too not, yeah. not tiny customers mm -hmm. big customers yeah um clearly they're onto something um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um and even the even uh when you know they they raised in 27 it's not and this is not just a case where they raised it, you know, it's one thing, you know, people say, oh, I raised a billion dollars and I'm so successful. Well, you know, 
if I raised a million billion dollars, I could probably come up with some revenue and some customers, or at least buy a company with some revenues and some customers. In the early, even when the growth was strong for UiPath, there was a lot of skepticism because it was like it's Windows software. Uh, you know, isn't everything going to the cloud? Um, and you know, is this just screen scraping or right. isn't this really easy? Anyone can do it. So there was a lot of doubters along the way. So the early rounds of funding were small. Right. So they were growing, they were growing at hyper, you know, hyper growth, mm -hmm. even without a lot of capital. Right. And that to me is that shows that um, you know, the, the <laughs> And I think the other thing too is they've not rested in terms of innovation. So they do have a, a comprehensive set of technologies. They're trying to create a platform. They bought a variety of companies. So I think they're the best positioned right now in RPA. And, um, you know, whether, you know, the markets go up and down and, you know, today it could be up, tomorrow's down, but, over the, the next few years, I think that growth will continue. I think the stock will probably continue to rise um, and they'll do more acquisitions and they'll, they'll just probably get stronger. Now, where they'll be in 10 years, I don't know. But I think in the next few years, I think their their prospects look really good. Yeah, 10 years, a lot of time in technology. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I was at a, an event at Salesforce uh, 11 years ago. Uh -huh. And, uh, the, the, it was, it was, Mark Benioff was there and the co-founder of, uh, Blackberry was there and it was right before the iPhone was launched. Mm -hmm. And, um, or maybe it was 12 or 13. I forget. It's maybe 13. I forget. It was a while ago. Um, they were on the top of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, Blackberry was the thing nothing could go wrong with this company right yeah but then a few years they were nothing they were done they were dead that's true that's true yeah, yeah. so so you you never know what could happen but at least yeah. uh, the way UiPath is growing now it shows quite a bit of promise right and yeah. and, and you know it all depends I think in terms of where they can grow into right I mean I think uh, to me, it looks like RPA was just a start for them yeah. if they are going to play it right, right? That's true. Because automation is a much bigger play. Right. And I think process intelligence now I'm seeing is another big play. Yeah. Uh, both now use the UI, which is the Windows UI, and they are mapping what people are working. Right. And they are actually looking to reduce the work that people do you know, and improve right. the productivity. Right. So as long as uh, as long as uh, people play that, I think in terms of you know just just changing the way people work and and right. the process intelligence people have started calling. I mean, one of them uh, I was talking to Scan AI the other day. They're calling in the telemetry of work, so they're actually mapping the whole work. And so um, UiPath also one of the evaluations is that they're bigger valuable thing is their process intelligence mm -hmm. and ui path is process intelligence plus automation and if right. they can play it well and they can combine it and they can keep playing it probably they have growth ahead but like you said we don't know yeah. <laughs> how things will evolve so yeah we spoke about ui path a lot uh, right. and and so what do you think of all these other companies? I mean, compared mm -hmm. to UiPath, uh, UiPath seems to have taken a lead, uh, but what about the other companies and uh, have you come across any of them? And yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Um, so I, I've i talked to the CEO of Blue Prism and the CEO of Automation Anywhere. So I've, and then, you know, I've, I haven't actually talked, talked to the CEO of UiPath, but I've talked to different executives there. Okay. Um, but uh, so I'm pretty familiar with uh, the big three mm -hmm. in there. I have talked to kind of these small, yeah. So you got these three players, and then there's a lot of small ones, right? You know, um, so I guess there's a Fortress IQ. I've talked to those folks. There's mm -hmm. a lot of different companies, a lot of startup and startups popping up, um, and I've talked to, talked to some of them. Um, but I do think that. It's, you know, I think we, I think we talked about this earlier uh, a couple of days ago about the winners take all. 
right about how technology is yeah and and that's the nature of platforms mm. i mean you, you you know in technology usually one platform will usually win out yeah and i i think what's going to happen is that these smaller players are you know they're probably either going to get bought out or just go away you know mm. or just become a small niche a small business right um but you know the reality is that if i'm autodesk I want a holistic, comprehensive, scaled solution. Okay. You know, if you can't offer me that, I'm really not interested in what you have to offer. So, um, you know, that that's why it's so important to 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 have that that type of that type of platform. Because if not, uh, you just get lost. And and I, there's over what I mean. I don't know what the, the latest count is, but when I wrote my book, there was over at least over 70 mm -hmm. different art I mean, it depends how you define rpa but yeah, there, okay. there were over 70 rpa companies and then you have companies like you know microsoft you know that have their own automation systems right uh, or sap uh i think oracle i mean you know probably at some point google mm -hmm. and oracle so what they may do is just buy or ibm bought some rpa yeah. companies i think these big these big tech companies are eventually going to eat up these small ones and try to break into the industry. So, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, one of the other players, obviously, is Microsoft, which is, yeah. which actually is, you know, who built the Windows platform. And exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, they should know something about. Uh, they should uh, know something system. about it. In fact, yeah. they know they know a lot more. Yeah. Uh, and they whatever UI path has built is uh, on top of what Microsoft has put out as free software, right? To right. actually ma manipulate the elements for their Windows software. And it's not just UI path, anyone, automation anywhere, all, all took uh, that and, you know, built on top of it. And many smaller companies are doing the same thing. And right. <laughs> that's yeah. how you have so many companies out there. Right. Um, but obviously UI path did something different. They executed yeah, yeah. better. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's debatable, but yeah, they, they kept on adding features uh, and they added a community. Like I said earlier, when we spoke earlier, to me, that's yeah. a big thing, you know, because right. that makes a huge difference that people have embraced it and people have started using it and people are evangelizing it. Uh, and so they, they've got a hit. So, uh, maybe they are one player out there pretty big right yeah. and maybe the other two three uh, pretty big out there yeah and then microsoft is there behind catching up uh, right. and actually catching up honestly Be though they are the windows guys doesn't count because these yeah. guys have built their library of stuff they are pretty ahead uh, but microsoft uh, took over software Mateo, they're catching up and yeah. they have a huge advantage in terms of owning that uh, Windows platform, as well as uh, you know many other things, and 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 just being that dominant cloud provider with Azure, so right. that that's one thing. Uh, I I think uh, I don't know if you see this, but uh, you mentioned Google, right? So how do you see this evolving? And could be that many of these things will move to the cloud, right? I mean, maybe RPA is yeah. one of the things from the cloud. Well, especially if, if uh, we, we accept the premise of AI, mm -hmm. because uh, AI on the cloud is a lot easier. Yep. Uh, centralize everything. The data is there. You don't have to buy a ton of GPUs. Um, right. You know, you just buy what you need, you know, rent it out, scale if you need to, or scale back if you need to. Um, so the hyperscalers are in a great position. They're in a great position for a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but AI is definitely one of them. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think Google, um, I'm sure they're paying attention to this and mm -hmm. they're, they're ramping their, their cloud platform right now. So uh, I could see that they, they could make a move on, you know, Google. whether it be RPA or some type of automation. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, if you were to, you know, let's end with this maybe, yeah. but you know, if you were to go wild and think about yeah. what AI can do for the future, I know five years, 10 years is a long time, but let's think right. this three years time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, where do you think AI can take us? Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll eventually get this self-driving car thing figured okay. out. Right. You know? <laughs> it's actually a very difficult, complicated yeah. problem. Um, 
you know by the way, by the way i was talking about to one uh, expert on autonomous car uh, yeah. thing and i was asking him like, the same question and he told yeah. me it's probably another 20 years away <laughs> because he is saying that the last mile problem is much more tougher than they thought earlier i th- i think he's correct i yeah. think they're finding out it's it's a lot more difficult than it than it seems just the last mile you know you, we already yeah. have self driving car like tesla you know it already yeah. drives itself that's right yeah yeah but like a like a truly completely autonomous self- yeah autonomous there's time you know yeah. we'll, we'll need time for that um yeah so i think um uh, you know i i actually to bring up automation anywhere i talked to the ceo about a year ago mm-hmm. his vision is that in 5 years ai will be able to understand any business contract mm mm-hmm. and that would be very powerful yeah that would be very powerful very difficult to do mhm um but you know i you know it, you know to put to put out you know it would put a lot of attorneys out of business um uh, that some people might think that's a good thing but um but just think of all the contracts in business i mean business all businesses have contracts they are a pain you know you know we have an nda over here but we don't want to have you know is it going to interfere with who we talk over here renewal you know companies forget about renewals and then they get fined you know they get pay penalties or you know they don't realize they're they're prohibited from doing certain things because of this contract someone signed 10 years ago exactly you know that so he's just let, you know left the company years ago and no one knows you know about this contract um so i think kind of this document you know so we have like document recognition you know where we map documents and find out you know entities or find out certain concepts and things like that but we don't know what that document means mhm and and to interpret it right you know can you know it'd be something to say that we get a contract and it'll say well there are all these different conflicts with this contract um there are all these different risk factors there but there are these benefits to this contract you know and you know that'd be amazing that would be amazing um so i think um you know whether we get there or not um i don't know i mean i think eventually we will we will mm-hmm. uh i'm not sure if it's 5 or 10 years down the road i think we will i think another thing we're going to see is um you know ro- robotics are going to get much more sophisticated mm-hmm. the um not, not the it's fun a lot of funny you know talk to people about my, my rpa book and they think they think and i'm talking about physical robots or right. something like that <laughs> right, right. and um but i I'm, i'm talking about physical robots physical now. robots yeah <laughs> because this um, is an this is an rpa podcast and people will think you're talking about rpa <laughs> so. yeah it's 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 funny it's fun so um i think uh, you know the the, the the parts and the systems for robotics are are falling in price and cost mm-hmm. uh and we we get we have some of this really sophisticated technology to automate these robots um you know i talked to someone who's an expert in in warehouse automation she told me that within 10 years warehouses will be 100% automated mm-hmm. um and then and in fact i think that's conservative um but you know that's going to have some far reaching impacts you know robotics because then we get into the physical world and actually replacing a physical person doing physical work mm-hmm. you know we've seen that already in you know auto factories and stuff like that but i think in the next 5 to 10 years when it comes to robotics whether it be you know a robot flipping a hamburger or a robot you know on a farm picking tomatoes or whatever um we're going to see a lot more of that uh come about and that's going to be driven because of these advances in ai i would say in data right right and that 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 that's a great thought that you know focusing on we can talk about like metaverses and blockchain and all right. that but there's still a lot of people doing this tedious menial, menial work right and yeah. you mentioned documents 
yeah. 80% of the data is still in documents. So we can That's talk right. about a lot of things, but the at the ground level, actually solving things for pro, for people, I think there's a lot lot more to be done. Yeah. Uh, whether it is documents, whether it's physical work being done, we've been doing yeah. that since the industrial revolution, but still, you know, there's a lot of things to be automated. Uh, think of the repetitive tasks that people do, like invoice processing and all, all yeah. the all the things that RPA is covering now. Right. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it looks like what would transform is the way we work. Uh, and, yeah. the, and in that sense, I think the people, the gurus or the leaders in RPA is right, that, you know, the yeah. way we work whether it's physical or uh, whether it is on computer services, it's going to change. And, and I have a theory there. <laughs> I think that we are going to move from doing work we we were doing because that's a work you know th that's a work that had to be done yeah uh, so doing work for work's sake to doing more of play work which is in the sense yeah. that uh, doing work that you love and so if yeah. you do things that you love it's more like play that's what people say right. so that's right so I, I think we'll move from like an economy that we see now as a service economy or a manufacturing right. economy to a play economy <laughs> where <laughs> People all enjoy what they're doing. And hopefully, yeah. I mean, that's my nirvana. <laughs> 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 and hopefully bots will take us to that nirvana. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, ho hopefully we'll get there. But yeah, yeah, thank you so much, Tom. And, you know, that that was a great thought to end on. Uh, so great. thank you so much. Uh, if people want to reach you personally, how can they reach yeah. you or find you? Yeah, so, um, I mean, email is probably the best. I'm, I'm like an old, old-fashioned person. So T-T-A-U-L-L-I gmail.com. I have my own website at T-O-M-T-A-U-L-L-I.com, just my name, tomtolly.com. Uh, there's a form on there that you can fill out to, yeah. that would reach me directly or Twitter at that T-T-A-U-L-L-I. Um, people sometimes will reach me on Twitter as well. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And you mentioned you know, email is old fashioned. Yeah. But no, like every other yeah. person I'm asked on the podcast, everyone yeah. I've mentioned their yeah. name at email.com. So it's never going to die. It's I, know never Slack, gonna die. I know Slack tried to kill it, but it didn't work. So uh, it, yeah. it's not, it's not, not going, going to away. work. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably another area, you know, with this document understanding, you know, an email. Yeah. You know, there's, like I said, that whole category is ripe innovation that's for sure right right for innovation and change right yeah i agree all right okay thank you tom thank you thank you, thank you for your time today excellent thank you for joining the bot nirvana podcast appreciate if you can leave a review on itunes or stitcher catch the show notes on botnirvana.org while you're there feel free to explore more automation ideas tutorials tools and more See you next time.